Recently, someone on social media reached out and asked me to share some of my failures and mistakes. And I thought it was a good idea because obviously, if you go into my LinkedIn profile or you go into my website or you do a Google search on my name, you'll see that there's things that I have done which I'm obviously proud of. And naturally, we talk about our achievements uh, when we promote ourselves. But the fact is, I think it's good for me to take this opportunity to share some of my failures and mistakes because I think it gives people some perspective that nobody really gets to high achievement or success or fulfillment without lots of errors, lots of mistakes and lots of embarrassing moments. I believe when you go through these types of challenges and problems and failures, I think it builds character. One of my first mistakes was to try and pick a job without knowing what my passion was. One of my first corporate jobs was working for a bank as a teller. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I had absolutely absolutely no interest in sitting behind a counter and counting cash. Naturally, I was terrible at it. Not only was I terrible, the staff members had to stay back every day and try and help me balance my till because they always found that there was extra money. The problem was not that I had less money, the problem was I had extra money and some, once I remember saying to one of the staff members, and this was in the late 90s, I remember saying to her, well, what's the problem I have extra money? And she looked at me and she said, well, it's not a good thing that you have extra money because it means that you've taken more money from somebody else. And I remember that those days were absolutely horrific because everybody had to stay back, they had to help me balance. And it was very embarrassing for me and at that time I had no idea what my passion was, I had no idea what my strengths were. All I was looking for was a job that would pay me a salary with a reputable company and I'm so glad that that incident happened because through that I realized that I was actually very good at talking to people and I was still interested in the area of banking and money but I just wasn't very good at counting cash sitting behind a counter and doing administrative type of work and if I had my time all over again I probably would have done some personality tests taken a stock of my strengths and my values before picking a career and a job. One of the other mistakes that I think I made is I didn't start a business early in life because I was so conditioned to seek job security and my goals were just to buy a house and a car. I really didn't think beyond that. And if I had my time all over again, I probably would have attempted to start a business at a much early age because you have more time to recover from mistakes and risks. And even though now I have good solid business experience and I tried to accelerate my learning in a very short space of time, and I do have to say that the corporate experience was quite handy, I think if I had started business earlier, because there is so much to learn in business, you see business is not just a single skill set. There are so many things from marketing to sales to product development to leadership to operational issues, finance, and that takes a lot of time. So I do wish that I had started business a little earlier than I did. Another mistake that I made was I partied a lot in my 20s and I think I spent too much time going out with my friends and drinking and you know some people might say it's, it's good to have that good time but I wonder how much time I could have spent on developing an exceptional mindset and a skill set which I'm glad I did eventually and I did make up for that time I believe but I think I may have, you know, even in some cases damaged my health by drinking excessively, by not taking care of my peace of mind. And I do sometimes think if I had my time all over again, I probably would have been a little bit more balanced with my partying attitude. And I do think that part of the reason I partied so much was because I just did not have any meaning and inspiration in the work that I was doing. And it was like an escape. And I think if you're somebody who also has an issue with excessive partying, you can probably relate to the fact that when there is meaning and purpose and inspiration missing in your life and your work, you tend to go out there and you tend to splurge and do the types of things that feel good in the short term and provide short term respite and relief but in the long term can be very damaging to us. A fundamental mistake that I also made when I was younger was to have too much ego and I think it came from a fear of not admitting that I didn't know everything and instead of going out and learning from successful people I didn't want to admit that I had ignorance and sometimes what happens is Ignorance and arrogance becomes a really bad combination. I think I was afraid for people to realize I didn't know as much. But rather than being humble and rather than saying, look, I want to learn and admitting that I didn't know as much, I think I sometimes 
acted out of excessive ego and I think that prevented me from being able to learn as much as I could have when I was young. A big mistake that I made, not just once but repeatedly, was to not take enough responsibility for my life and my results. I have blamed everybody for my problems from my parents, to the government, to my employer, to my wife. And I think when people are frustrated, they tend to blame something else or somebody else. And now I teach success and one of the things that I teach is that unless we take 100% responsibility for where we are, even though the tendency in the short term may be to shift blame, in the long term if you want to be successful we need to take 100% responsibility. So I think this was one of the fundamental mistakes that I made was I always found somebody else to blame. But the reason I was still able to change my life was because in the long term I took 100% responsibility and I did what I could. Another one of my mistakes that I sometimes reflect on is the fact that I sold investments too prematurely and I think this was back in the early days of my journey when I didn't really understand the importance of time in wealth creation and I did not fully understand the applications of compound interest as they apply to investing. I ended up making premature decisions where I ended up selling investments prematurely and ended up putting some money into lifestyle but very quickly I realized that that was a mistake and then since then I have prioritized investing over lifestyle to rectify that problem. Another fundamental mistake that I made was I tried to do everything on my own and I did not get a mentor till I turned 31. So really it I think it put me behind a lot because once I identified good mentors and I leveraged of their learning and experience, I found that I accelerated my success very quickly. And I wonder what would have happened if I had got a mentor in my 20s instead of my 30s. Certainly, you know, uh, better late than never, but I do sometimes think that if I had had the right type of guidance from the right type of people early on in my life, I probably could have been further ahead compared to where I am today. One thing that I recently recognized is that by not learning how things are built, I find that I have some deficiencies in my ability to work with tradespeople. I think as a man, it's important to sometimes know how things are built. So I realized when I was, you know, if I'm building a house or if I'm doing gardening, and there's a lot of things that I just did not know because you know, once I determined that I was not going to be in the blue collar space, I took no time to understand some of the physical work that one has to do at some point in their life, whether it's changing things in the house or fixing things in the house. You know, I think it, it pays to have some basic level of understanding and expertise because if you continue to delegate and outsource that work, and not only do you never understand how things work and how things are made, but I think a lot of the times you end up spending and wasting a lot more money than you need to because you're not having an understanding of how things are built. A fundamental mistake that I also made was I waited too long to build visibility around my own personal brand. So whilst I was working in corporate, I attached myself to a corporate brand and their products and services. And I never really thought about putting myself out there and becoming a thought leader in my own right. I doubted my capabilities and I frankly was afraid of standing out. And I think a lot of people can probably relate to this one, but this is a regret because from the time that I decided that I was going to become visible and I was going to start to share my experiences, my perspectives, my thoughts, my ideas and my insights, what has happened to my career is just absolutely incredible and I wish that somebody had told me how important visibility is to your career and that if you just have expertise, you end up working way too hard for too little. But if you combine expertise with visibility, I think it can really propel your career fast. And probably the last fundamental mistake that I can think of that I continued to make a lot was to pick friends and girlfriends based on looks over personality and values. And I think a lot of the times I felt that that was the most important thing. But I think when you get older, you start to realize that personality compatibility and values alignment is way more important because at some point when the looks deteriorate, what happens is if you don't have compatibility and you don't have foundational alignment on principles and values, it becomes very difficult and your peace of mind can be compromised. And when your peace of mind is compromised, your whole quality of life is diminished. 
I hope you enjoyed learning about some of my failures and mistakes, especially if you've been following me on social media. And I think I'm proud of the fact that I did not allow those failures and mistakes to permanently disable me. In fact, I've used them as uh, stepping stones and foundational steps to improve myself and to use them as a basis to propel myself forward and to enhance my learning. And I think one of the things that you can do is to make a list of some of your setbacks and failures and embarrassing moments and mistakes and ask yourself, what can you learn out of those failures and mistakes? And can you possibly use them as foundational stepping stones for the next level of your success?